Welcome guests to the Live Your Spa Life show. I am so excited to have this conversation with you with Dr. Paula Bellingham. Welcome Paula and so great to have you as part of the Spa Life conversation. <laughs> I am so happy to be with you, Diane. You radiate, you're so light filled with your hair, your face, your energy. I just, I'm, I'm thrilled to be on, on with you. Uh, thank you so much. To our guests, I am so excited to share what Dr. Paula has been up to. You know, she has a doctorate in education degree in human relations, and she's the author of six books and many magazine articles. We're going to be talking about all the things that she's been doing for over three decades about, you know, shifting things in the United Nations and peace. And, you know, people are really wondering how they can have more balance in their life and accomplishment. So stay tuned for this because Dr. Paula is going to share about how this has all worked for her. So I just, want to, I just want to interject real quick. I love when people document things in their life and you know, you're all about education. What has been, what's your favorite of the six books? Ooh, that is such a, that's a wonderful question, Diane. <laughs> my favorite. You know, I think my favorite is the one that I wrote um, when I was over a three-year period, my oldest son is a Special Forces Green Beret medic, and I went back to Fort Bragg, and during the day, he was jumping out of perfectly good airplanes and things <laughs> like that, and I had time, and I wrote the Book of Values for children of all ages. It's 76 values, and it's in child speak, so like appreciation, love, and kindness, compassion, communication, steadfastness, determination, 76 of these. And I love them, and, they, and uh, then they come with stories and discussion questions, very interactive with the children, and uh, you know, I love that book, and I, I'm just excited about getting it out to the world. Ah, oh, I love that. You know, yeah. when, when people look about focusing on what it is that they want to do in life, and if they have like some foundation around their values and why they're doing the things that they're doing, yeah. you know, it's so amazing to have that. So thank you for bringing that work into the world. Yeah. So. I want to talk about too, Paula, is that you are a leader, a global leader in the women's movement today and the founder and CEO of the Women's Information Network. Tell yeah. us a little bit about what is that? Well, Women's Information Network is a community of women in many, many nations. In fact, I, I have to share with you, in 2011, it was the 100th anniversary of International Women's Day. I own internationalwomensday.org. We get so, so many hits from all over the world. And this is the largest national holiday, a national, it's a global holiday for women. And, you know, I wanted to do something very special on the 100th anniversary. So 2011, we put on, in collaboration, because collaboration is actually my middle name, it's Paula Collaboration. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> That's right, Diane. And we put on 377 live events in 152 countries. And so wow. we'd reach out and find the Dianes and the Paulas and these different nations and say, do you want to celebrate on International Women's Day? And to be able to do that, then that's when I really became uh, friends with so many women in so many nations. And I'm just trying to, you know, educate and get out and serve them uh, all these years. And, and so the Women's Information Network, we put on Global Women's Summits. And personally, I've put on 42 of these in 30 nations. And then I have trained 120 other women who put these on in other nations all over the world with a, <clears throat> with a whole purpose of, so I'd love to share my mission. My mission is to strengthen women and families worldwide through education, enlightenment, and entrepreneurship in an effort to eradicate illiteracy. And I love that. And it's hunger. So and, the very, and the very best part is this last line. And to increase the level of love, prosperity, and peace on earth. Big wow. mission. <laughs> you know, I, I love that. You know, because when we talk about spa life, it's like, you know, people are doing some big things. I mean, you've yeah. accomplished a lot of things over your lifetime, but you've done it with like some balance and grace. And when people hear that, you know, you're the founder and director of the Global Prosperity and Peace Initiative, it's being implemented in 196 countries and nations. Yeah. And you know, people are look about like, you know, how can I do the things on my local block? And you've just gone, you know, hit the ball out of the park and oh, have gone on a national level. And, you know, the global initiative, it, it offers solutions. Now this is the thing, listen to this, you guys, 
11 of the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals. I mean, you girl are doing things on a bigger school scale outside. Tell us a little bit more about the Global Prosperity Peace Initiative. Oh, I love that you asked that. Well, a couple of years ago then, and I know everyone receives their mission and parts of their mission different seasons in their lives, and I'm almost 70, and I've had this experience globally, and I just have had a yearning to really help their, um, you know, increase the level of love, prosperity, and peace. That's part of my huge mission. And how do we do that? So I formed a nonprofit because the Women's Information Network is wonderful and it's doing its work. But this nonprofit can go right to the heart of how do we create peace in the heart, in the home, and then spreading throughout humanity. So reaching out and knowing uh, a bit about, I know quite a bit about the United Nations, having worked uh, with some of the, the wonderful people there, and knowing that they have these goals, and knowing that there are people in the nations who want to help with the goals, but they don't know how. And knowing that one of, uh, I have so, so many things to learn and so many things I don't do well, but one of the things I do do well is being able to take a complex problem and making, just simplifying it. Like the the lessons I just told you about, they're simple for children. So many of the people in the world just need to be told, this is what you can do right there. And when you sit in your local, that's where it starts, just right in in your heart and then right in your home and then in your local area. So how do we help them do that? So we're creating an app and it's called Total Life Excellence because what I've learned and what you know too, Diane, is that people, you know, when you don't, let's say if you're overweight or you are struggling financially or you have a poor relationships with your, with anyone, it, it permeates everything you do. Your heart is not at peace. And so it's not just about physical excellence. It's not just about having a lot of money. It's not just about, um, you know, having great relationships. It's all integrated. So we call it total life excellence. And we have free programs, absolutely free for all the people of the world on this. So that they carry around these phones, <laughs> so billions of phones. So we're making it accessible so that you could download, for example, these lessons for children. You could download how to start and grow a business. You could download how to be a better wife, mother, sister, you know, aunt, and all the things that not just me, but many other experts have created through the years we are bringing into this app and then our websites to make available and then go into the using collaboration with other wonderful NGOs and non-government, non-government organizations, but also nonprofits and companies and partnering with them and saying, give this information, this wonderful content to the people within your circle of influence. And uh, when they do this, then line upon line, precept on precept, we're going to be able to get this out to the world. I love this. I I Ah. love that, you know, because you and I have talked about that, you know, it's not just one aspect of your life. I mean, people will will focus on, you know, maybe their business or their their, uh, their home life, but they don't look at all the different layers of who we are and how important it is to have that balance in your life. I mean, that is one of the main principles we talk about in spa life is that, you know, you want to have accomplishment, but you want to do it with harmony. And what are all those other layers that actually make that happen? So Paula, one of the things I love hearing about this is that, you know, you have actually spoken for delegates at the United Nations at Uh conferences around the world for over three decades. Uh You know, I mean, how did you even get to that? I mean, a lot of people are like, you know, they're not even getting on the PTA in the normal, you know, their normalhood, right? And you're talking at the United Nations. How did that come about? Well, when you think about the United Nations, you have to know that any great organization are, are people. So one of the things that um, I was asked to, our family performed uh, for 12 years professionally just in the summers. One of the places was over at the World Congress of Families in Switzerland. And at that event, it was way back in 1999 at that event. Then I met Ambassador Mokhtar Lamani, who was the director of all the inner, all the Islamic nations at the United Nations. He was very powerful. 
and he and I spent hours together. And then I went to the UN and, and really learned about it. And then he came and actually honored me by staying in my home. And I went to Quebec and stayed in his home. We became very close friends. He started speaking at my women's events for the WIN, the Women's Information Network. Right. And I started learning and learning. And then he invited me to come and speak to the delegates, these all the, these delegates from the Islamic nations. And he said, I want you to do this simply. He said, I don't want you to talk way up. In the, I want you to talk about kindness. How do people have just kindness in their home so that these mostly men can treat their wives with kindness, their children with kindness? He said, I'd love to invite you to come with me into these countries and talk about simply kindness. Because one of my books called Solutions for Families is based on a lot of research 2,000 families over a 10-year period, and they identified what's the single most important ingredient in a happy home. Wow. It's you know, kindness. I, I, it's kindness. I yeah. love this because, you know, it, it's so funny when you, you, you talk about, like, I love that you're out doing what you love to do with your family. I mean, when I think of you and your family, I think of the Von Trapps from <laughs> Sound of Music. Oh, my Did gosh, Diane. I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, your family singing around the world, doing what you love. I mean, this is what I want you guys to hear is that, you know, Paula is doing what she loves. She's with her family and she's able to step out and do have the impact that she wants to have as well. So it's just, you know, stepping into the things that we are uniquely called to do in this world and to just build upon that and just start, you know, being in a place, doing what you need to do. And when you talked about your book, Solutions for Family, that was also the name of your radio show right. that you had for seven years right. where you were educating people. Right. So what is what, what was your favorite thing about doing a radio show? Oh, my goodness. Uh, just teaching. I'm a teacher. I, I love educating. And I know that, you know, when you, it, Parents don't come with a manual, you know, they don't know what to do. And they don't know. And so one of the things I give is the very words to say, like when your children are just mildly misbehaving, you're not going to say the same thing as if they just scream, I hate you, and they're 18 years old, and they slam the door. I mean, what, what do you say? What are the words? And how do you? And, there, and we could do a whole nother show on parenting. But this is right. something that I feel so strongly about. But my eight children and now 24 grandchildren, um, really the key is compartmentalization, Diane, because I, you know, some when I'm working and like I'll be leaving in a couple of weeks for India and I'll be there for three weeks teaching, I'm not going to be spending time over there thinking about my family. But like yesterday, I, I just told my team I'm, I'm out and I spent, I had about 20 of my grandchildren. We went to the zoo. And, you know, but see, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I got to interject here. So, you know, I know some parents struggle with taking one or two children. To <laughs> you. you took 20. <laughs> I did. I took 20. And, uh, but I wasn't alone. I had four of my five, uh, I had five daughters and okay. two daughters-in-law. So I had, they came with, I wasn't there alone. Okay. with. Them. <laughs> but uh, no, these are the numbers I deal with. <laughs> right. Are you ready? I just, well, this is so important to have this conversation because, you know, when we talk about spa life, so many people just live their life by default and not by design. And so that's really what I want to talk about is how it is that you are designing your life yeah. and how you consciously create that in your life. And so tell us more about compartmentalization, because I know this is okay. the key how you're designing your life. Really, and, and that's the, the key is really like I, what I just said, compartmentalization. I, I compartmentalize. When I am working as a CEO, when I am Zooming with my friends in India, I am completely focused on that. I'm not worried about that child, that grandchild, or that anything. I can, and, and I just, you know, invite women to do this because we get real distracted and sometimes we just react instead of being consciously acting and I, I have a schedule and I don't always keep it perfectly but I do have a schedule where I give very quality time and after about 7 p.m. I'm done with my work and I'm with my husband of 46 years and I'm with my family and I don't answer the phone unless I say if you're bleeding and every pore <laughs> <laughs> send me an email that's a 911 and you know if you, I have to deal with it if you can't wait till the right. morning and then I'll just run into my my home office and I'll check and see if there are any 911s about right. you know every hour just check real quick 
Um, but if they're not, I don't think about it. And uh, you have to do this. Yeah, it's really so important to give time to yourself. And I do that. Today, I'm going to go get a pedicure with my oldest daughter who's visiting from Connecticut. We have 17 people in our house right now. 17 <laughs> people I'm feeding, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But you see, it's summertime. I don't do this. You, I knew they were coming. I planned for it. They're here for a month. And we just plan it. And right. so many women, like I said, Diane, they just react and they don't have a, a plan. And you must have a plan. Yeah, or absolutely. How you well, and to have that many people in your home and to be, <laughs> be to realize the importance. I always talk about self-care in terms of, I like using the term extreme self-care, that it's not Ooh. a luxury, that it's a necessity <laughs> to have this to be able to do all the things that you are here to do. Yes. Which leads me to, I'd love for you to share a little bit about you know, I really feel like when you ask people how they are, they say like, I'm so busy and it's almost become not only a badge of honor, but I almost feel that that busyness is like the new addiction that people are doing <laughs> so many things yeah. that it, it can drive them crazy and they're not able to really focus on what they're doing. So, yeah. you know, what, uh, you know, this whole, you know, we all have 24 hours in a day. I mean, you're yeah. in, mostly in other countries than you're in this country. You have a big family, you have a big purpose. There's so many things yeah. that you're doing in your life. You yeah. know, what is the, what is your spa life secret that allows you to get the most impact out of your day? Well, really uh, back to that collaboration. So I have a, a very small team. There are only three of us doing what we're doing because I have over 300 volunteers. These are people who are looking to help and to be part of something big. So don't try to lift the whole thing. You don't have to push the boulder up hill, you know, with your nose <laughs> by yourself. That you have a team and then you have so many people who say, yes, I want to be part of this global, you know, whatever it is, global prosperity peace initiative. But like the, these women that I told you about, the 120 women, they came on their own dime for me to teach them, to train them to go out into the world. They, they're paying their way to go out, but then they stay with my friends in these nations. So the cost is minimal, but they're giving of themselves. I'm not, they're not on any payroll. There's not great income coming in for anything that I'm doing. You right. can do things once you find like-hearted people and you say, you know, let's do this together. And they're looking for something that gives their life great meaning. And if you can help them do that and share and be a team player, it works. Uh, I, I love this so much. I mean, you know, we, I'm so thrilled to get this message out into the world. And, you know, even though we're going to be, you know, on blog talk radio and some people will just have this audio but you know, we'll also be on, on Facebook and people will be able to see this. And this is such an important message to get mm -hmm. out there. So if when you're watching this on the replay, you know, when people are looking at this, please share this. You know some of the women out there who have a really big mission and they really want to uh, make an impact in the world. I'd love for you guys to put in the comment, like, where are you from? I mean, Paula, you have such an international impact and audience that I know when we get this out in the world and this is gonna circle around many times, I'd love to see in the comments, where people are in the world, where they're listening to this, and what are some of the big things that they're up to? It's part of how, you know, you and I are such big collaborators and connectors. And I love to hear like where our audience is coming from and how we can support them. And this is how we work together as, a, you know, a groups of people of when we have bigger things, we do this in community. So yeah. do your part and share this with someone else who really maybe doesn't even know where to start and, you know, have the amazing advice from, you know, you, Paula, who's been doing this for over three decades, having your family and being able to do your passion and doing it in a big way. In fact, I have to throw out here, one of the things too, is that, you know, Dr. Fellingham has received an award from two U.S. presidents. I mean, that is so huge. I mean, not only Barack Obama, but George W. Bush, for your efforts in the world, this international thing. And it started with you just making a stand for what was important, looking at kindness, looking at what are the values that people had, and then you asked for help. So yeah. some people don't ask for help. So I think that is amazing that you did that. You know, is there anything else you want to share about um, your path and <clears throat> things that can support our listeners? Oh, I love that. And I do have to add, I, one of my sweet friends, Debbie Allen is in Arizona and she has a presentation called Kick Up Your Ask. And I love that. <laughs> I love that. Uh, yes, yeah. 
you're never going to get it if you don't ask. And, and I would love to invite your, your viewers and your listeners, Diane. I welcome. I just would love to have them uh, go look at prosperity and andpeace.org. So it's, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> prosperityandpeace.org. And it says, would you like to participate? And uh, I'd love to have you, if you're, especially in other countries, and of course the U.S., but if you have just a, an, a desire just to learn more, well, how can I be part of this? Where is the Peace Summit going to happen in my nation? And just uh, go to prosperityandpeace.org and, and come play. I'd love to do that. I'd love to invite your viewers and listeners to, to uh, participate with this fantastic initiative to increase the level of love prosperity, and peace on earth. I love that so much. <clears throat> so w one of the things you, there is like the, uh, there's an event coming up here in the fall. So tell us a little bit about that. Okay. So the, the Prosperity and Peace Initiative, we're hosting, uh, it, with collaboration, of course, 115 events in 100 nations on Peace Day. So International Peace Day is September 21st. And, uh, you know, you could, we have some as big as a thousand. Most of our events will be between 100, 200. But I've said to people, and especially women, just in the last couple of weeks, who have reached out and said, well, there's not really time to put on a great big event. I said, fine, you know, get five, 10 of your friends together. I'll send you, I'll download or send you a, um, uh, our peace presentation and a thumb drive or just celebrate peace. We're going to have some live happening on prosperityandpeace.org and just get together and celebrate the possibilities of how we can increase the level of love, prosperity, and peace. But we really do give everyone who has an event, even small ones, we give you uh, materials that you can use at that event. So I just encourage everyone to jump in and celebrate peace and prosperity on International Peace Day. I love that. I mean, what a way to connect people all around the world. And whether you've got a thousand people in an event or just five of your girlfriends in the living room, That's they, right. can, they can just go to the global prosperity and peace initiative.org and get all the materials they need to share in the love and the energy of this event. Yeah. And it's just prosperity and peace without the global and without the initiative, just prosperity and peace.org. And yeah, Come play. <laughs> oh, how fun. I, I love this so much and, and what you're up to. And thank you. You're so passionate about doing it for, you know, all these years. And, you know, I have to ask you, so what has kept you so passionate? I mean, most people, you know, they have an idea <clears throat> and they're inspired and they think that, you know, willpower is going to get them through it, but they haven't created the environment to actually have them sustain, you know, their visions and goals and things that they are doing. What has kept you so passionate and on this path for over three decades? Oh, I love that question. Thank you, Diane. That's very precious. Well, it gets pretty personal because I absolutely believe that I received this mission from God um, as it, after an ask. What am I supposed to do on this earth? And I believe that when someone asks with faith that they'll receive an answer and say, what is my mission? What? What do you want me to do with these talents, these gifts that I, that I have, um, and, and how can I serve? When, that, when you are pure in your question of how can I make this world a better place, any way you want to you wanna say it, then, and you're looking, and you're asking, then into your heart will come what you're supposed to do. And into my heart came that I'm supposed to be a global leader who is educating and serving women and families worldwide. And I've, I've just had that reconfirmed so many times. And the second thing that's kept me passionate is because as I've gone out and seen that one person, 10 people, you know, my team and, and me, we can make a difference. And, you know, like these 20,000 women that I'll be speaking to in India in a couple of weeks and, you know, six different events and in three different cities and i i'm so thrilled because i have an opportunity to allow them this higher power touch the hearts through me touch the hearts of these people and when this has happened over and over and over for all these decades how can i not be passionate because love begets love and i love them i truly love 
Yes, I, the I love that. the world. And as I give that love and share that love, it comes back and it's just cyclical. And um, it, it'll happen to anyone who has a, a, a true serving heart. Uh, I mean, I feel your passion and I, I love that that you are in, inspired and that it's the ask, you know, it comes down to that ask. If it feels too yeah. big and to be able to go out into the world. And I, I know that you're, you're bold and you're sassy and you have, you know, all these things that you're up to. I have to ask you this question. I love to have you finish this. So if, what, if you say like, I unapologetically am doing what, what is it that you're unapologetically doing in the world? What's a stance that you're doing? And that to finish that sentence, you unapologetically stand for what? I am unapologetically helping to lift the level of love, prosperity, and peace on this earth. Oh, I love that so much. That lands so beautifully. And Thanks. so one of the things is that, you know, I hope listeners, I hope you're hearing here that you can actually have this level of accomplishment and do it with harmony, have them coexist so that you can have the lifestyle that is your spa life. So one of the things, another question I have for you, uh, Paula, is I talk to people about, you know, when you're doing all these big things in the world, you know, your home is your haven and it's where you, you start the day, you end your day. I know that you've you know, shared about doing some compartmentalization and some really focused activities for you. You know, your home is your castle. It's a place where you come home to. And I have conversations around having different rooms in your home, having a different experience. You want to feel differently in your bedroom than you do in your kitchen, than you do in your family room. So I love to ask you, what is your favorite room in your home and why? Mm. It's not a room. It's a deck. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very small deck. It's about 12 feet by about eight feet. And for me, I, I, I really am filled spiritually and mentally, emotionally, and just all ways uh, from nature. And uh, I closed the curtains here so it wouldn't be too bright. But when I look outside in my home office that I'm in right now, it's a 10 foot window. It looks out onto a 50 mile lake and onto a 11,000 uh, foot mountain range. Wow. And every minute that I'm not at my computer, if I'm on my phone, I turn and look. And then when I need my um, solace and my, you know, just to, to receive, I go out to my deck early in the mornings. And I have that time of keeping my mind and my, my spirit you know, um, in tune with the, the grandeur and the largeness of the world and my plan. So I try not to, uh, you know, I, I have a global heart and I think of the women in Malaysia and Singapore and, and Senegal and Morocco and constantly all the time. Mm -hmm. And I feel more connected with them when I'm outside actually. Um, and, and just being able to look at the, the grandness. And so to me, having a place, any kind of a view, even if you don't have much of a view, to be able to you know, get out where you can keep your perspective large and, wow. and try, not to, try to not be in a little box because a little <laughs> box then gets all filled with worry and guilt and all the things that we women are so good at. <laughs> So I, it just feels like um, to stay in tune, we need to have time when we are, uh, and I ask out on my deck, I ask my big questions, and what should I do today? Who should I serve? And, um, you know, I, Marianne Williamson is one of my dear, dear friends, and I've learned so much from her. But she gets up every morning asking, what am, I, what am I to do today and who shall I serve and how shall I do that? And I ask those same questions. I love that so much. You know, one of the things we do at our, our spa life retreats is we look at the nine different elements of our life and nature is one of those big things that we look at because nature is a mirror of the grandeur of life. So I love that you start the day with that, that that's your favorite, you know, room and that that's, you know, where you spend your time because, you know, nature really does give us the answers that we want to have. And it's when we step outside of our life and we look at things from a different perspective is where we can step into those bigger dreams, those bigger goals, and to really 
step into the expansiveness of this. I mean, of course you would be outside in nature to do the big things that you're doing. And I love the analogy that sometimes some of the rooms that we may have built for ourselves actually can contain us in a way that we can't see that bigger vision. Yes. So I love that for you. Thank you. Yeah. So our listeners, please embrace that. I mean, how much time are you actually spending out in nature? And when you do that, what are you doing? I'd love to have you guys put that in the comment. Actually, I think it's so important to get out in nature. And sometimes when we get focused, we're, you know, we spend so much time in front of, you know, lots of different boxes, whether it's, you know, a box TV or a computer or a phone and all of these things. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing to get outside of those boxes to actually connect not only with other people, but with nature and the universe. So I'd love for you guys to put in the comment, where do you go to get out in nature? Are you going out on a walk on your block? Are you going out in the mountains? Do you go to the ocean? Like, what do you do to get out in to nature? So I'd love to hear the comments on that. And, you know, even if you haven't gone out for a while, put that too, like, ah, it's time, you know, just, I'd love to just hear where you're at with that and how you are utilizing nature for you to see your bigger vision. So I love that so much. Thank you so much you know, Dr. Paula, for, for all that you've shared. And I know that our listeners who have big visions, who are really going to want to tap into what you've laid the, the foundation for. So how can our listeners keep in contact with you? Prosperity. Yep. Yeah. So Paula, my email is Paula at prosperity and and peace.org. Ah, yeah. Fantastic. Lots of peas, Paula, P A U L A, <laughs> prosperity and peace. <laughs> I have loved being with you, Diane. You radiate. You are just precious. I honor you for the good work you're doing. Um, you know, I just love you and love uh, the precious women who are seeking and knowing in their heart of hearts that they have gifts, they have talents, they have wonderful things to offer others. And some of us are you know, creating paths and platforms upon which then they can, they can share those talents. Absolutely. Well, well, thank you so much for that. I, I love the, the platforms that you have created and, you know, you have cleared the way for a lot of women to see what's possible and for them to step into, you know, if they stand into who am I to do this, you know, who are you not to do this? And so, you know, for those of you who are wondering, like, how can you live your spa life? How can you have this kind of lifestyle where you have accomplishment and harmony together? I also have a free gift for you guys to look at. You can go to dianehaffman.com forward slash guide. Again, that's dianehaffman.com forward slash guide. And you can start looking at what are the different elements, some of the things we touched on today in terms of, you know, nature and self-care and taking care of yourself and really stepping into your bigger mission. So, you know, utilize these resources, please put in the comments below, uh, you know, any questions that you may have, you know, Dr. Paula and I will come back around and look at them and, you know, would love for anybody who, you know, really wants to have some support into stepping into their bigger vision and to be able to utilize these tools that we have for all of you. So again, Dr. Paula, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Today and to sharing all your pearls of wisdom. And, you know, I honor you as well and all the things that you are doing. So thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Live bye -bye. your spa life. <laughs> bye for now. Bye-bye.